What's up guys, welcome back to another episode. Today, we are going after a smart and elusive fish called Mu, also known as Big Eye Emperor. Mu live in deep water during the daytime and come into shallow water at nighttime to feed. Their diet consists of mostly octopus, urchins, and shellfish. Today for bait, we're going to be using fresh taco legs that I caught in a previous episode. So if you haven't watched that, go and check it out. We'll drop a link below. So an interesting fact about Mr. Moo, they have human-like teeth in the back of their mouth. They use it to crush up urchins and shellfish and my lion apparently. So right before the sun went down, I casted out a fresh blinking taco leg. A couple minutes later and I was hooked up. So by the way this fish bit, and by the way the fish fought, I thought right away I caught a moo. But turns out, it's Mr. Bluefin Trevally, or Milu. Not a bad catch, just not what we're after right now. So this guy got to go back home. So later in the night, I retied my line and casted out another taco leg. This time, I was 100% convinced this was a moo. They have a specific way of fighting where they'll scream your line and then swim inwards, kind of like dead weight. I knew this was my one chance of getting that move. So right here, I felt my main line scratching against the reef. But somehow, my line held up, and I was able to land this fish. But look at that guys. That is what we're after. One of the most delicious fish we have in Hawaii. Mu is not a common catch, and this is the biggest I'd ever caught. So you already know what's going on. We're gonna take this guy home, make a gyotaku impression, to make this moment last forever. Still can't believe I caught this beautiful moo. Stoked. Moo have several different looks. Spear fishermen typically see them with three vertical black bars with white bars in between. They normally show these bars in colors when they get excited. This moo in particular, I caught fishing at nighttime with a pole, so the colors were very different. It was more of a bluish bronze without the bars. So I actually ended up keeping all of the gear I used to catch this fish. My leader, my hook, my swivel, my lead, I kept all of it. I wanted the memory of this epic night to be as strong and accurate as possible. Recently, I've been doing a lot of these type of gyotaku impressions where I print the actual gear and bait that was used. It really helps to solidify the memory. Selecting the right gear, tying your knots, the right size of bait, all these things had to go right in order to catch your fish. Now that the memory is preserved, let's see what we can do with the fish. We got two beautiful moo on our table today. I caught one and my fishing partner Kobe gave me a huge one. Alright, so we're gonna start cleaning up this fish. The scales run towards the tail, so we're gonna go the opposite direction. And 
be sure to get up by the dorsal fin. That part can be very tough sometimes. So the scales fly everywhere. So I'd advise cleaning your fish outside. So normally I'd cut the head off, but we're going to make a sashimi display. So I'm going to leave the head and the body connected. A beautiful, rare and tasty fish like this deserves the best preparation. Let's see what we can do. Alright, so with that muay caught, we're going to make a sashimi arrangement. So for presentation purposes, we're going to use the actual body of the fish to present the sashimi. So first thing we need is some daikon garnish. Now you could do this by hand if you wanted to, but we have a tool for that, so we're not going to do that. You want to squeeze out as much water as possible. So right below the skin, there's a layer of flavor and fat. The skin is too tough to eat raw, so we're gonna cook it with a torch to make it edible. As soon as you're done torching, place the fillet into some ice water to stop the cooking process. You want the skin to be cooked, but the meat to remain raw. Even when cooked, the skin can be a little tough. So we're gonna cut some slits along the length of the filet to make it easier to chew. So when I'm cutting sashimi, I always arrange the pieces in the same order they came off the filet. This is gonna make your life so much easier when you're plating. So to add some texture variety, we're going to serve some pieces with the skin and some without the skin. Now is the fun part, plating. You get to see all of your work finally come together. So I like to use my knife to scoop the whole section at one time. Makes it a lot easier to place. Cut some lemon for garnish, add some color. And repeat for the cook pieces. I don't follow a preset template of how these are going to look. I just start them and it's all spontaneous. I think that's more fun that way though. You really get to be creative and see it slowly come together piece by piece. It's really about trusting the process. Trusting yourself, trusting your own skill, and just knowing that it's going to be something amazing in the end. Final step, garnishing. This is where you add in the color to see it really tie in together. And there you have it. Let's go check out Dane and see what he's up to. We put down our tea leaf so that our fish doesn't stick to our steamer pan. We give it a couple scores. So I only put two things on this fish. It's ginger and garlic. And don't be shy with it. You can be generous with it. Scoring is so that we can allow the ginger and garlic to penetrate down to the meat. 
All right, so now we're transferring into the steamer. So I'm cutting up some onions to go on top and inside the cavity of the fish. Once the moo is done cooking, the onions will become the bedding. I like to create a bedding so you have all your infusion of your flavors of your shoyu, your ginger, your garlic, and your hot oil. Now we're cutting up Hamakua oyster mushrooms. These are great flavor absorbers and they have meat like texture. So we're going to add more to our bedding. We're going to use Chinese cabbage or wambok. This vegetable will shrink a lot when it's cooking. So you can add quite a bit if you want. This is a homemade stainless steel wok burner. It has high BTUs and can boil water in seconds. Now that our water is boiling, we're gonna transfer our fish to the steamer. We're gonna allow the fish to steam for about 30 to 40 minutes. Add about a handful of cilantro on top. Pour on your sizzling peanut oil. You know it's ready once it starts to smoke. This is our own twist of a spicy garlic soy. It's got Hawaiian chili peppers, soy sauce, ginger, garlic, and some sesame oil inside. This is what we're all about at Sakana Syndicate. Catch cook, and create. Don't forget to subscribe, smash that like button, and stay tuned because we're just getting started.